Hi everyone, welcome to today's video where we're talking about how to find the area and perimeter of parallelograms and triangles. So follow along with me. Um, you can see the formulas on the screen. Feel free to write things down, take a break, pause, replay, whatever you need to do so that you get this lesson completely in. Now my warning is to you, these are not basic, basic problems. You do need to know your property rules of 45, 45, 90 triangles. 30, 60, 90 triangles, and also Pythagorean theorem. All right, let's take a look. So first of all here, the area formula of a triangle is 1 half base times height. You already know this. It's not a new formula for geometry students. B stands for the base. H is for the height. Now the height and the base always meet at a right angle. So that's how you know what the base is. The height and the base form a right angle together, and those are the values that I would plug in for this formula. However, if I wanted to find the perimeter of any kind of triangle, what I'm really doing is I'm adding up all three sides, B being the base that we already have, let's say, from that triangle. But notice with perimeter, I don't need the height at all. The height is irrelevant. However, sometimes the height is needed in order to find one of the other sides of the triangle, maybe with one of those special triangle rules. A parallelogram is basically two triangles together. So if the area formula for a triangle is 1 half base times height, and I take a triangle and I simply double it, well, 1 half times 2 is 1. And so the formula is just base times height. And it's the same exact idea. I have my base, and my height is always at a perpendicular 90 degree angle. Um, and those would be the values, and I just simply multiply them, kind of like the rectangle formula, length times width. Parallelogram is base times height. Notice I don't care about like the slanted sides. However, for the perimeter, perimeter, I wouldn't care about the height the same way as before. Maybe I need it though to find a certain side length. I would simply add up my two different sides and then multiply it by two. I mean, I could do A plus B plus A plus B, but two times A plus B is the same thing. So two times the side and then two times the bases. Let's take a look at the parallelograms here on the left hand side. So here I'm given this parallelogram and I want to find the area and the perimeter of it. And guys, all of our final answers, we're going to round to the tenths place. But while we're doing some of the calculations, we're going to round to the thousands place. Um, I generally always go out three place values until I get to my final answer, just so I could try to stay as accurate as possible. So here I have a height of five and I have a base of 6.5. Remember, the base doesn't have to be at the bottom. It's simply where the height is perpendicular to um, the base. So here, I would be able to just simply do the area, which is 5 times 6.5, and I would get an area of 32.5 units, some basic calculator work. But now if I wanted to calculate the perimeter, the problem is I know that this length is 6.5, and so is this length. But I don't know what the left and right-hand side of my parallelogram is, but I'm given this little symbol that there's a 60. So if I know that the side opposite the 60 is 5, remember your 30, 60, 90 rules. The side opposite the 5 is the side opposite the 30, which is x, multiplied by radical 3. But So if I'm given the side opposite the 60, in order to go to the side opposite the 30, I need to take this 5 and divide it by radical 3. Now I'm not going to rationalize the denominator and use my radicals. Again, I'm going to put it in my calculator and see where it gives me to the thousands place, and that's actually the length for x. And then remember, the side opposite the 30 with relationship to this side of this triangle, which is really the hypotenuse, is we double it. So to find the hypotenuse of this little right triangle here, it would be two times that amount, which is 5.774. Now I know the length of this side, I know the base, I simply do two times the sum of those values, or again, I could really just write 6.5 plus 6.5, 5.774 plus 5.774, and rounding to the tenths place for my final answer, I get 24.5. Next one. Um, I know that this little part here is 5. I don't know this part. I do know the full length of this part of my parallelogram is 8. But I don't know the height, and I don't know the full base. So, But I do know this is 30. And in this little right triangle here, this here, 8, would be the hypotenuse. 
the relationship with the hypotenuse and the side opposite the 30 is that side x is half of it. So if this length is 8, then this length is 4. Okay, so now I want to know the height. Well, there's a couple ways I could do this. I could do the Pythagorean theorem. Um, it would be this y squared plus 4 squared equals 8 squared. Or since it's a 30, 60, 90, I can know that the relationship between the side opposite the 30 to the side opposite uh, the 60 is to multiply by radical 3. So I would do 4 radical times radical 3, which is 6.928, which is my base now, or my height rather, excuse me. And to find my area, it would be my base. So 4 plus that 5, this is the entire base, times my height. And I would get 62.4 units squared. Perimeter, um, well, since I know that this is 9 and this is 8, I would add those up and double it, and I get 34 units. So again, this 9 is coming from the fact that we knew this was 5. This little segment we solved for x, which was 4, so altogether that whole side length is 9. Next one, 45, 45, 90 triangles are built into this parallelogram. Um, I have a slant, but it's not my base. I need to know this base and this height. 45, 45, 90, we know those are isosceles triangles. So if I find X, the height, it's also going to be the same height for my B, the same length for my base. So going from the hypotenuse to a side length, remember, is dividing by radical 2. If I do 12 divided by radical 2, that means X is 8.485. Take that now, base times height. So they're both the same, and you get 72 units squared. Perimeter, this is 12, so is this opposite side. And then I know that this side here is 8.485, and my full perimeter is 41 units. The base of a parallelogram is 7 units longer than the height. If the area of the parallelogram is 18 square units, find its base and height. Okay, so base of a parallelogram is 7 units longer than the height. So I'm going to call the height h, and then the base would be, I'm sorry, x, and then the base would be x plus 7. And if I multiply those together, the height and the base, that should be equal to 18. Okay, so my area is equal to the base of the parallelogram, which is 7 units longer than the height. If I multiply this out, I get 18 equals x squared plus 7x. First step in solving a polynomial equation, set the equation equal to 0. Then we factor. What factor pair of negative 18 gets you 7? It's a positive 9 and a negative 2. Set each of those equal to 0. We get our two solutions of negative 9 and 2. But think about it. A negative could never be an answer if when you substitute it in, you get a negative length. And here, I can't have a length of negative 9 and then double it and have another side of, let's say, um, I'm sorry, add 7 to it. I'd still be in the negative. So the negative 9 is actually not part of the solution. So this means it says the base of a parallelogram is 7 units longer than the height. So that means that x is the height, so the height is 2, and the base would have to be 9 because it's 7 units longer. And it makes sense because 2 times 9 is 18. It all works out. Let's try these problems here. We want to find the area and perimeter of triangles now. So I need the base and I need the height. I don't have either. I do see that this is a 60-60, and we have to know that this has to be 60 up here because if you have two angles that add up to six, or six, both 60 that add up to 120, the third angle would also have to be 60. So it's an equilateral triangle. So keep that in mind for a moment. My 8 is my hypotenuse. We know that if this is a 30, 60, 90, that if this length here, which is opposite the 30, would have to be half. So x would be equal to 4. If I then want to calculate my y, my y is the side opposite the 60. Again, I could do the Pythagorean theorem like I did before, or I could simply take my 4 and multiply by radical 3. And I get that 6.928, which we actually saw in a previous problem. Now that I have that, I know this is 4. Okay, and these are congruent triangles, actually, because they have angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side. They're congruent to each other. If this is 4, then this is also 4. So my formula would be 1 half, my full base, if this is 4, then this is 4, 8. 
It's also an equilateral. So if this side is 8, then this side would have to be 8 multiplied by my height of that 6.928. And I get 27.7 units squared. My perimeter is super easy. Since it's equilateral, all the sides would be 8. And I get 24 units. This next one, there's not a lot of information, right? But there actually is. This is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Side opposite the 60 is 7. I want to find the side opposite the 30 because the 7 is my base. This would be my height. So to find that height, I'd have to do 7 and divide it by radical 3. I get this number 4.041. Then I would plug it into my area formula. So it's 1 half my base times my height. And we get 14.1 units squared. Perimeter. So I know this is 7. I know this is 4.041. I can simply double it to get my hypotenuse. Or this is an example of where I could use the Pythagorean theorem. I could say, hey, this is 7. This is 4.041. Let me plug it in. Or I can just take this length of x and simply double it to get the hypotenuse. And I would get the same exact thing. Um, and then for my perimeter, it's me simply adding up those three sides, 7 plus 4.041 plus that 8.083, and we get 19.1 units. Okay, now, area formula, base times height. So here the base of this obtuse triangle is 20. What you actually see here is you see that from the obtuse triangle, the horizontal has been extended and then a vertical has been created to get a 90 degree angle. The purpose of that is so you can actually see what the height of the triangle is. The height of the triangle is 12. So it goes that many units up. But the base is not from the right angle. It's just what you actually see for the triangle, 20. So I actually have my base and height here. So it's 1 half base of 20 times the height of 12. And that ends up being a pretty easy problem. It ends up being 120 units squared. But perimeter is a different story because the only side of this triangle that we actually know for perimeter reasons is this 20. We don't know this length. We don't know this length. But because this right angle is here that helped us with the height, this now helps us create, use the Pythagorean theorem rather, as we don't see any 30 or 60s, we can't determine that. We can't assume it if we don't see it. So if I wanted to find this, length here of the triangle. Notice this is the hypotenuse of this triangle here, this right triangle. So 5 squared plus 12 squared would be equal to x squared, which ends up giving us 13, which is nice. And now if I wanted to find this hypotenuse of the big triangle, including this right angle here, it would be 12 squared plus 25 squared equals y squared, which ends up giving me about 27.731. Now that I have my three sides, I know what x and y are. I can add those up, and I get my perimeter of 60.7 units. Last problem. The height of a triangle is 2 times its base. If the area of the triangle is, a four, is 400 square units, find its base and height. So if the area is 400, I would plug in my 400 for a. 1 half, it says the height of a triangle is 2 times its base. So here's the base, x. And then here's the height because it's two times the base. Now think about what ends up happening here. Half of two is one. So this is really just saying 400 equals x squared. Square root of 400 is 20. So that would mean my 20 is my base. The height is two times the base. So the height would be 40. And it makes sense. If I multiply 40 and 20 together, I get 800. Take half of it. It brings me to that 400. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching.